with so much hype always being around which games are the best games of all time. Let's go back to the 80s and look at some absolute shockers. Sometimes a game will fail due to negative reviews regarding poor graphics, unplayable controls, or glitches. While there are many which can make this list, the ones here have endured negativity and frequently appear on worst games of all time list. A couple on this list ruined a company and partially contributed to the video game crash of 1983. First up is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, a side-scroller published by Bandai for the Nintendo Entertainment System. The game is loosely based on Robert Louis Stevenson's 1886 novella and received decent reviews when it was released. However, in retrospect, many reviewers criticized the repetitive gameplay and poor use of characters and setting. In 1984, Game Informer reviewed the game in their retro reviews section and gave it 0.5 out of 10. Flawed on every fundamental level, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde is possibly the most unplayable garbage available on the NES. In 2018, the German branch of Eurogamer placed the game at number 8 on their list of top 10 worst games of the 80s. Nothing is explained to the player. It is a frustrating and confusing experience. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde should be played by anyone who wants to learn more about good game design, because this title makes everything so perfectly wrong, you could almost think it was deliberately designed that way. Next up is a doozy, Custer's Revenge, an unlicensed Atari 2600 game made by American Multiple Industries. Loosely based on the 19th century American General George Custer is widely considered one of, if not, the most offensive game ever due to its plot involving the apparent rape of a Native American woman. It was listed as the most shameful game of all time by GameSpy. PC World listed it as the third worst game of all time. In 2008, Professor Tom Keenan from the University of Calgary cited the hideous Custer's revenge in a piece regarding current video game violence. In response, the game's creators elected to preview the game for women and Native American groups, with many calling this act a publicity stunt. The next game was a huge success in the arcades and is the biggest selling game on the 2600 with sales of just under 8 million units, but the port of Namco's Pac-Man for the Atari 2600 was so poorly done that critics lambasted it. To meet the limitations of the 2600, graphics were simplified, the maze layout was modified, and the ghosts flickered, a result of the game rendering one ghost per frame on screen due to hardware limitations. Retrospective reviewers consider it one of the worst products from this period of video game history. In 1998, Next Generation called it the worst coin-op conversion of all time. In 2006, IGN reviewer described it as a disastrous port, citing particularly the color scheme and flickering ghosts. Industry analysts often cite Atari's Pac-Man as a major factor in the drop in consumer confidence in the company, which partially contributed to the video game crash of 1983. IGN's Levi Buchanan commented, It disappointed millions of fans and diminished confidence in Atari's games. Loosely based on the Steven Spielberg film of the same name, was reputedly coded in just five weeks to be released in time for the 1982 holiday season. E.T. was universally panned by critics, with nearly every aspect facing criticism, including plot, gameplay, and visuals. PC World, Electronic Gaming Monthly, and FHM Magazine, all listing it as their worst game of all time. Some considered it so bad that the title screen was the only redeeming feature. In 2007, GamePro named E.T. as one of the most important games of all time, due to its role in the 1983 video game crash, and the downfall of the seemingly unstoppable Atari. While the game did sell 1.5 million copies, it came nowhere near Atari's expectations of 5 million units. Also, many of the cartridges that had been sold were sent back to the company due to complaints of the game being unenjoyable. 
Truckloads of these cartridges, along with Atari's Pac-Man, were buried in a landfill in New Mexico in September of 1983 after they failed to sell. On December 7th, an infamous date for sure, in 1982, Ray Kasser announced that Atari revenue forecasts had dropped 35% from 1981 to 1982. As a result, then Atari parent company, Warner Communications, stock value dropped around 35%, or a loss of about $1.3 billion. Atari attempted to regain its market share by licensing popular arcade games for its consoles, but it did not reverse their decline. In 1983, Atari reported a loss of $536 million, and Warner Communications sold off the company's consumer division in 1984 to Commodore International. Well, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.